Welcome to the Weekend Word with Pastor Steve McKinney. I'm excited to worship the Lord with you. It's always good to worship the Lord with you. But I'm also excited to get into God's Word with you here today because I believe that it is sharp and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, and that it will cut away those things that are not supposed to be there. And it will penetrate our hearts so that God's word, God's truth, God's power can penetrate our lives even further than it has. We want full surrender to the Lord. We want full worship to the Lord where our lives have literally become worship to him. Thank you for joining me here today. I don't believe that it's an accident that you're here and I trust that you will receive God's word. You're going to be a hearer of God's word. Philippians chapter four, verses six to seven says this, don't worry about anything. You can't pick and choose what you're supposed to worry about. You're supposed to not worry about anything. You make it a choice to not worry. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Now, some people believe that worry is something that you cannot stop. Uh, They believe that it's something that it is, it is beyond your control. I'll have you know, guys, that with God's help, worry is in your control. Worry is a verb. Worry is something that you do. Uh, You know, you might get hit with thoughts of anxiety, but if you meditate on those anxious thoughts, if you dwell on those anxious thoughts, if you amplify those anxious thoughts, then you are going against God's word because God's word says, don't be anxious about those things. Don't worry about those things. Don't dwell on those things. When those thoughts do come up on you, when those thoughts do attack you, there's something that you can do about it. So don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. What is the remedy for worry? It is prayer. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Focus on what he's done in the past. You're still alive. You've been healed many times. You've been broke before, but God brought you through and God sustained you. Amen. We all have testimonies that sometimes we forget about and we have to intentionally remember those testimonies in our times of prayer and thanksgiving. Amen. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Then verse seven says, you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds. And I love this as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. Living in Christ Jesus is the key. How do you live in Christ Jesus? You become a man or a woman of prayer. You become a man or a woman that you are in constant communication with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are people of prayer. We are living in Christ Jesus. We worship no matter what. We spend time in the word no matter what. We are disciples no matter what. We are not fair weather Christians. We are rain day Christians. We are stormy day Christians. We're Christians all the time. Can I get a witness on that? Can I get a good amen on that? But now I want you to pay close attention here. Is the peace that you receive when you decide to not be anxious and not worry, is this peace that you receive uh, when you decide to pray and remember what God has done in your past, be thankful, okay? Is this peace reliant on an answer to prayer? And if you look at the scripture, you will realize there is nothing mentioned about an answer to prayer. So here's the thing. When you pray, you give everything to God and you become aware that God is in control. And as you pray, you become aligned to his will. You become aware that he sees the big picture and you don't. And so peace comes on you before an answer comes. All right. Your peace is not dependent on an answer from God. Your peace is dependent on your trust in the Lord and your communication with the Lord. And so even though the answer has not come, boom, peace is already on us. And here's the next thing. All right, guys. And when the answer, yes, comes, 
Wow, that's awesome. Or when the answer no comes, that's equally awesome. All right. Because God has answered your prayer. Yes or no. And either way you accept his answer because you understand and you realize because you've come into alignment with him in prayer, you realize that his way is the best way, even if it did not come into alignment with your way. All right. And so the peace that we receive is peace that we receive before an answer, or if the answer is yes, or if the answer is no, or even if the answer is not yet and wait. All right. Whatever the answer is, whatever the answer is, no matter how long the answer takes, We have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. We have the peace of God that does not make sense. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is not based on results. All right, are you with me? The results are up to him. We trust him to bring the the correct results into our lives. I said it last week. I'll say it again today. I thank God for every yes that he says to me. And I thank God equally for every no that he says to me. I thank God that he says no when the answer should be no, because I don't know what to pray. The Bible says none of us knows what to pray. The Bible actually says it is the weakness of humans that we don't know what to pray, but it's okay because we can yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit can pray through us and we can trust God to pray through us and we can trust God that when we've been praying under our own power, according to our own will, we can trust God to say no, which is a blessing. It's a huge blessing that God says no when the answer is supposed to be no. It's a huge blessing that the answer is yes when it is supposed to be yes. And it is a major, huge, tremendous blessing that once we pray, even if we're still waiting for an answer, even if the answer is no, even if the answer is yes, We have that peace of God immediately because we have put our trust in God. Can I get a good amen on that? Guys, I grew up in an era where there was a phrase that was used on a pretty regular basis. And that phrase was this, if God is willing, God willing. Okay. And we don't really hear it that much anymore in this new generation sometimes, but not so much. I used to hear it all the time as a kid growing up in the church, God willing. And sometimes it was very frustrating because, uh, you know, you would make a, a dinner appointment with someone. You would say, Hey, can we get together for dinner next Friday night at 8 PM at my house? And they will take out their calendar or their, or their phone. And they would say, yes, it's on the calendar. God willing, we will be there. <laughs> God willing, we will be there. Wait a minute. What do you mean? God willing. Didn't you just put it in your calendar? Didn't you just confirm it with me? Didn't you just essentially make a promise to me that you're going to have dinner with me next Friday night at 8 PM? Uh, yes, but something might happen. Uh, And so I place God's will at the highest point in my life. It is bigger than my schedule. And so if God allows something to come up between now and next Friday, where I need to be instead of at your house, then I'm going to do what God wills. And I'm not going to do what my calendar dictates. And of course I'll call you and I'll let you know that it's not going to work out anymore. All right. But I really do mean what I say, God willing, I will be at your house next Friday. That that's kind of how things were spoken. And it was spoken uh, in the realm of healing as well. It was spoken in the realm of answered prayers as well. Lord, if it is your will, Jesus said, let this cup pass. And we pray things according to the will of God, which means sometimes we understand that what we are praying is not according to God's will. And so my title today actually is this humble faith, 
Humble faith. Humility and faith are two words that need to go together. What is humility? You are a servant of God. You are subservient to the will of God. The will of God is higher than your request. The will of God is higher than your plan. And so you are humble in your faith. You believe. You believe that God will lead you. God will guide you. God will do miracles. God will provide. But you also make room that all of that is based on his will. It is all based on his timing. And we accept his will. We accept his timing. And so we walk in faith but we also walk in humility. We walk in humble faith. There's a word in the Bible that that helps us to understand this concept a little bit better. And the word is perhaps, perhaps. What does the word perhaps mean? It's a polite way of saying maybe, all right? It's a way of saying maybe, maybe, maybe. You didn't realize that maybe can be a spiritual term. Uh, in the way that we've been raised, we often think that maybe is a sign of lack of faith, but maybe it's not, all right? Maybe perhaps is a sign of humility mixed with 100% faith, knowing that when we pray, maybe the answer is going to be yes. It's going to be according to God's will, or maybe the answer is going to be no, because that is what's best according to, to the big picture that God sees, or maybe the answer is going to be wait. Let's wait on the Lord. It's not the timing of the Lord yet. That is 100% faith but it's also a perhaps. It's also a maybe. Here's another way to say maybe. Here's another way to say perhaps, God willing. All right. God willing, God willing, maybe, perhaps I have faith. I have confidence, but I put it all in God's hands that he is going to make the best choice. He's going to be the one that opens the door at the right time. He's going to be the one that closes the door at the right time. Let's look at the life of David and see how this worked in his life because King David was a man after God's own heart. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 22, uh, when, when David was dealing with a child that was sick, that it seemed like the child was going to die, and by the way, the child did die. Okay. This is the child that was conceived before Solomon. Okay. Uh, and, and David replies to people who are criticizing him. He says, I fasted and I wept while the child was alive for I said, perhaps the Lord will be gracious to me and let the child live. What, what is this saying? When the child was sick, when the child was still alive, David fasted and prayed with a big perhaps. He said, if I give it to the Lord, if I trust in the Lord, perhaps the child will live. Maybe the child will live. I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast and I'm going to believe and I'm going to trust the Lord, but it's God's choice. It's God's plan. And ultimately God said, no, God said, this child is coming with me now. All right. And so the heart of King David was the heart to say, perhaps, maybe, Maybe God will answer yes to this prayer. But I also recognize in complete faith that maybe, perhaps, the answer will be no. Here's another one from David. 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12. When someone was cursing David, a guy named Shimei, he was cursing David and, and his men said, allow us to go and cut this guy's head off. No one should be allowed to curse the king like this. And David's reply was this. He says, and perhaps the Lord will see that I'm being wronged and will bless me because of these curses today. In other words, David said, let that guy continue to curse me because I believe that God blesses those who the enemy curses. Let him continue to curse me because maybe, maybe, 
perhaps the Lord will see that I'm being wronged. He will see that I'm not taking matters into my own hands. He's seeing that I'm not reacting in violence. He sees that I'm allowing him to defend me rather than I'm defending myself. Perhaps the Lord will see that I'm being wronged. Perhaps the Lord will see that I'm being cursed. Perhaps the Lord will see that I'm being falsely accused. And perhaps, maybe, maybe he will bless me. Maybe he will bless me in the way that I'm praying, in the way that I'm asking. Even with blessings, King David had complete faith in God, but he also, in those two instances, had complete humility with God, saying, Lord, if it is your will, if it is your will, then I know you will bless me. I know you will do a miracle and cause the child to live, but if it's not your will, or if the answer is no, then I trust you with the no. David was big on this word, perhaps. Let me remind you again. Perhaps means maybe. Perhaps means God willing. Perhaps means if it's God's will. If it's God's will. Guys, this is hard for humans. The reason why is that we all kind of look at life uh, pretty black and white in a lot of different ways. Uh, we look at life as win or lose. We look at every little situation and we think we won in this situation or we lost in this situation. Let me give you some, some examples. We feel like we've won in our career or we've lost in our career. We feel like we've won in sports or we've lost in sports. Uh, in America recently, there was the Super Bowl and there was the winner of the Super Bowl and there was the loser of the Super Bowl. But let me ask you a question. Was there really a winner or was there a loser? No, actually it was a first place and a second place out of a lot of teams. All right. So in a lot of different ways, the team that lost the Super Bowl, they didn't really lose. They definitely didn't lose in life. They just lost that game. They just lost that one battle. But in life, they've won because they beat out a lot of other teams. And by the way, they made a lot of money. All right. Uh, they didn't really lose, although they lost that game. All right. The same is true in the World Cup. The same is true in a lot of other sporting events. We like to see everything as winner or loser. But I will have you know that even if you prayed and even if you lost a game, you can still be a winner in Jesus. You can still be a winner in life. You can still be a winner in God because he sees the big picture. And guess what? Maybe it was God's will that you not win that game, but it is his will that you win in life and that you win in eternity. Here's another one. A lot of people feel like they have won or lost in marriage. Here's another one. A lot of people feel like they've won or lost in relationships. Can I just tell you, sometimes there are seasons and even when things go wrong, there is recovery. Okay. God is is in control. This is not the end of your world. This is not the end of your reputation. This is not the end of you having friends. God sees the big picture and God gives us hope. And even when we feel defeated, God says, no, if you will continue to stick with me, you will win in this life. Here's another one, health. Sometimes we feel like it's a win or a lose in health. And guys, sometimes somebody that we pray for who has cancer, they get healed of cancer. And sometimes somebody that gets prayed for for cancer, they die. All right. And both of those can be according to God's will. But it's really hard if you're the relative of the one who died, because you might think, wow, why did God favor that other guy so much that his family still has him? 
And why did God not favor me? My dad or my husband is gone. Guys, the Bible makes it very clear that God does not love anybody more or less based on the results. All that it is, is that we trust God that the one guy was supposed to be healed. He would have died before his time and God healed him. And the other person, we don't understand why, but it was his time. All right. And so a lot of times we feel like the one guy won and the one guy lost. No, if they're in Christ Jesus, both guys are winners. They're not losers. Both guys are going to spend eternity with their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, if they knew him, if they were surrendered to him. Are you understanding what I'm saying? God's will is bigger than our request. God's desire, God's will is bigger than our desire. He knows best. Here's another one. Finances. All right. We don't know why some people succeed and they are totally evil people. And some people, they struggle in finances their whole life. We don't understand it, but God understands and God sees the big picture. And yes, we do stand on God's word that we will be in health and prosper even as our souls prosper. But we leave the level of success to him. We leave it up to him. You know, I can, I can, I can say this to you. If your desire, if your prayer is to be worth a hundred million dollars, then I will say this to you. If God is willing, it will happen. All right. Now, what is the other thing that I'm saying? If it's not God's will, you can pray it all day long. It's not going to happen. All right. It's all about what God's will is. He has given you a lot in life. And we need to be those people that we walk in complete faith, complete faith. Yes, I am. I am believing God for millions of dollars for those people in our church. I'm believing God for millions of dollars, even in my own life and ministry. I am. I am believing God for, and I trust and I know that he is able and he is capable and he can do it. And if it is his will, he will do it. And I also understand that if it's not God's will, that even though I want it, I don't really want it. All right. I want things to be done according to God's will. Anything outside of that is a disaster. It is a disaster. I will end with one more scripture. Proverbs chapter 16, verse nine says this, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. We surrender our steps. We surrender our life. We surrender our plans to the Lord trusting him that he sees the big picture he knows best and so let us be the people that are the if the lord is willing people let us be the people that are the perhaps people let us be the people that are the maybe people we believe 100 percent that god can do it But we believe that God's will, God's purpose, God's plan is higher than ours. And so we come into alignment and we accept God's will and we have humble faith. Let's pray. Father, we worship you. We love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you have made this really clear. And I pray that this will help every person within the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord, that we would have incredible levels of faith, but that our expert expectations would be based in your word. 
And so, Lord, I do speak healing into every single life. And I say, Lord, if it is your will, heal every single one. I know that you can do it. I know that you are healing many people within the sound of my voice. I pray for financial breakthroughs and miracles. Lord, if you are willing, Lord, I pray. I pray that according to your will, that you will bless and that the enemy would not be able to rob, steal, kill and destroy, but that everything that is supposed to come to us, it will come. Lord, I pray for the relationships. I pray, Lord, for for the people who feel like losers. I pray, Lord, that they will take this word here today and that they would be inspired and that they would be lifted up and that they would be built up and that they would learn to trust in you and to humble themselves before you and to pray with thanksgiving, Lord, and have that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, whether the yes is is there, whether the no is there, whether the maybe is there, whether the wait is there. Lord, we want to be those people that experience your peace and your power in our lives. Now, Father, I do pray for relationships. I pray for reconciliation. I pray for all of the marriages, all of the families. Lord, I pray for Gateway Mission Assembly that you will help us in every decision that we need to make. Father, I bless the finances of the families, of the churches, of the businesses represented. And Lord, we trust. We trust as we cry out, perhaps, As we cry out, maybe, as we cry out, if it is according to your will, we trust that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We love you. We worship you. We adore you. And we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I love you guys. God bless you. Go in, God, and I will see you again next week. God willing. Bye.